Welcome once again to Lato's Law. Here's Steve Lato. We've talked before about intellectual property a little bit on this channel. The idea that if you were, say, a painter and you made a painting that was original and you created it, that you'd have the right to protect that image, to exploit that image, make money off that image, and so on. License it, maybe. Maybe make t-shirts. <laughs> Nowadays. <laughs> so here's an interesting story. The Italian museum that owns Leonardo's Vitruvian Man has successfully sued to stop production of a jigsaw puzzle based on the work. Sarah, thank you very much for sending this to me, from artnet.com. An Italian court has blocked the puzzle company from producing and selling that product. So Taylor Defoe wrote the article, and it's an Italian court has blocked a German toy company from producing jigsaw puzzles featuring Leonardo da Vinci's iconic drawing. And of course, you're familiar with the Vitruvian Man. So the company was brought to court by a museum in Venice where the actual, real, bona fide Vitruvian Man is held. The museum says that it was owed financial compensation from the puzzle manufacturer, even though the artwork is 500 years old and is in the public domain. Now, keep in mind that these laws vary wildly from place to place, especially from country to country. So at the heart of the case is Italy's Cultural Heritage and Landscape Code, which grants public institutions in the country the ability to request concession fees for, or to outright bar, commercial reproductions of important artworks regarding, uh, regardless of their copyright status. Last fall, the Court of Venice sided with the gallery in the case, ruling that the company making the jigsaw puzzle must cease production on its puzzle and any other things it's manufacturing or merchandising featuring the Vitruvian Man. The court rejected the German company's argument that the Cultural Heritage Code only applies in Italy <laughs> and has now ordered the toy company to pay the gallery $1,600 for each day that the puzzle has been manufactured since November 17th, 2022. Now, you might say, but Steve, that's an interesting argument. If the law only applies in Italy. Well, that's always the question. If a law in some other place than where you are affects you, what effect does it have on you? In other words, suppose there's a company in Germany making a puzzle. And a, a, a court in Italy says, you guys have got to stop that. We're going to fine you. Company could, if they wanted to, say, oh, knock yourself out. Let's see what happens. And just keep going. Because what can the court in Italy do to affect the behavior of the company in Germany? And so it depends. Some countries have got treaties with each other about how they will handle judgments. So if you get a judgment against somebody who's a Canadian citizen, but you get it in a U.S. court, there's a process whereby you can go through trying to get the Canadian government to help you with respect to the judgment you got here in America. And so that's one possibility. The other possibility is that many companies, as you might guess, have locations in other countries. They might have assets in other countries. They might operate in other countries. So if the company in Germany says, we're going to ignore that Italian judgment, the Italian court, well, they probably need to avoid the country when they're doing business then, meaning that they don't want to sell their puzzles there and they wouldn't want to have any stores there. They wouldn't want to have any of their assets there. Because if somebody finds out, like, oh yeah, the company is in Germany, but they've got a warehouse in Italy, uh, they might be able to go up to the warehouse, for instance. That's just an example. The Vitruvian Man puzzle would have been a 1,000-piece puzzle. It's no longer listed on the website of the puzzle company, though it remains available for purchase through third-party distributors. Representatives of the company did not immediately respond to an email inquiry about the status of or whether they plan to appeal the Italian court's decision. Now, the puzzle has been marketed and sold in Italy since 2009, but the dispute between the company and the gallery began a decade later when the museum sent their cease and desist letter and asked to be paid 10% of all sale proceeds from that puzzle and anything else using the image 
of the Vitruvian Man. The manufacturer refused, according to the Italian news outlet La Repubblica, since 2019, as soon as I was appointed, I launched a project aimed at recovering the illicit commercial use of products derived from the image of Leonardo's masterpiece, says the director of the museum speaking to the newspaper. I'm curious to know if he's chased down anybody in America doing that. Because I think that most people would have assumed, gee, it's 500 years old. Uh, the image is out there. Uh, how protectable could it possibly be? A spokesperson of the museum did not respond to a request for comment. This is not the only notable instance of an Italian institution invoking this code recently. Last October, a gallery in Florence sued the French fashion label Jean-Paul Gaultier for appropriating Botticelli's Birth of Venus on various pieces of apparel. While in 21, the same museum threatened legal action against Pornhub over the website's use of artworks for an interactive app, artworks by Cezanne and others. And um, this is, like I said, it's an interesting question. Uh, one thing that you should know and this is something that a lot of people miss, is that Da Vinci sat down one day and did the Vitruvian Man. It may have taken him more than a day. I don't know. I wasn't there, as I like to say. <laughs> Just slightly before my time. Just slightly. And he creates this artwork. Okay, It's, it's a work of art. It's a masterpiece. It's going to go down in history as one of the most recognizable images in Western culture. Everyone's seen it. It's been parodied. It's, it's inspired other things. So here's the thing. That original artwork in the museum in Italy is physically owned, apparently, by the museum. It, it might be owned by somebody and on loan. I don't know. But the point is that there is an entity that owns the physical thing. The physical thing, right? We're talking about the rights to use the likeness of the thing. That's very different. So it's possible that you can own something and someone else can take a photograph of it, for instance, or reproduce it or duplicate it somehow. And their reproduction or duplication obviously is not the original. You still have the original. The reason I'm pointing this out is that I would be curious to know where did the puzzle company get their image to work with? And I've known people who've said to me, well, Steve, this is in the public domain, so I'm going to use it. And then they use an image that was created by somebody else, not the original artist. So let me give you an example. Let's suppose that you went to the Louvre and saw the Mona Lisa. I've, I've, I've been there and I've done that. Not all it's cracked up to be, but it's something you do when you're in Paris. So you take a photograph of the Mona Lisa. Somebody sees your photograph and goes, that's a cool photograph. And they take your photograph of the Mona Lisa and start using it commercially. And when you approach them and go, that's my photograph, they go, yeah, but it's of the Mona Lisa. It's, it's, it's public domain. The image of the Mona Lisa itself might be public domain. But the photograph that you took of it is yours. Because you're the artist who created that image. And so that's one thing to keep very, very at the front of your mind here. And I have to point out a funny story. Is that there's a car right here. Dodge Charger Daytona 1969. That's the livery of the one driven by Bobby Isaac. It's the K&K &K Daytona. The car is famous. I've driven the car that this model is based on. It's in Alabama. And the owner of the car was very, very generous. Let me drive the car. Let me photograph the car. Let me climb all over it, take pictures for research I was doing. And that day I had one of my big cameras with me. I'm talking about a big old Nikon digital camera. And I shot tons of photographs of that car. And I shot some very, very nice photographs that I think were actually from different angles than some of the most common photographs of the car that were out there. And so I posted a couple of them on various sites that I was on. And the funny thing is, is that one of them in particular, I would recognize anywhere because I photoshopped the background. There was something behind the car that I thought was distracting and I photoshopped it out. And I know I photoshopped it out, but no one else would know that. 
So one day I'm poking around on the internet and I come across a website and I see my photograph. And it's on another guy's website. And I look at this photograph and I'm like, that's my photograph. I know because I photoshopped out the thing that's not in this photograph that ought to be there. So I was going to send the guy a note and attach a copy of the photograph. So I went to right click on it and it goes, you don't have authorization to download this photograph. (laughs) The guy had protected the photograph from people like me downloading it when I'm the owner of it. And I sent the guy a note and I said, hey, I'm kind of curious about this. You're using my photograph without my permission. And I couldn't download a copy. I wanted to send you a copy just to remind you which photograph it was. And the guy apologized and he took it down. But nowadays, you know, people don't do stuff like that. Uh, In terms of you could contact and they go, "Ah, who cares? Um, It's not the only time I've had it happen, photographs of mine. But the funny part was that he had protected it to keep people from downloading it, including the guy who took the picture who owned the rights to it. So getting back to somebody making a thousand piece puzzle out of the Vitruvian man, I'd be very curious to know whose image they were using. Did they send somebody to the museum with a camera and take a picture? Or did they find somebody who'd already gotten a picture and used theirs? And, and I'm assuming they would have compensated that person But then you wonder about, does somebody who has got a photograph of it and is selling copies of it, including the people who make puzzles, are they paying the museum? So there might be all kinds of small streams of income out here the museum isn't following up on or hasn't found out about yet. But that's what I'm curious about the most, is which image they were using. And so if you go online and and pick something, like the Mona Lisa or, you know, I don't know, Washington Crossing of Delaware, or pick any really, really well-known image, okay? You will find many, many examples of it out there if you simply Google the image, especially if it's something hanging in a museum. People take the picture, they post it. So you'll see all these images that are all obviously of the same thing, but slightly different depending on the vantage point and the skill of the photographer. And by the way, if you go to the Louvre to see the Mona Lisa any day of the week, any time of the day, uh, it's down at the end of that one gallery featured so prominently in the Da Vinci Code, and it's behind glass, and then there's ropes around it, there will be a sea of people around it all doing this with the image back there, taking a selfie with the image back there. And as you stand there and watch this, you realize that that's actually the comedy because there's the painting and you can only get so close to it because they've got the ropes around it. But then you can only get so close to the ropes because there's so many people taking selfies. And so you can stand further back and kind of see the painting, but you've seen it before. So there you go. Sarah, thanks for sending it. The Italian museum that owns Leonardo da Vinci's Vitruvian Man has successfully sued to stop production of the Jigsaw puzzle based on the work. Artnet.com published a story by Taylor Defoe. Questions or comments, put them below. Let's talk to you later. Bye-bye. Thank you for watching Leto's Law. If you think nobody cares about you, try missing a couple of payments.